Hello, and welcome back to the channel, more specifically the replay analysis series. For those of you who don't know, this series is trying to break down all of the decisions and choices the player makes during the game to try and put together how they come towards the fantastic result that they could possibly get or the mistakes that either they or their teammates make to sort of bring it down and bring it all crashing down into a loss. This time we've got Sabo playing the tier 6 reward British tank destroyer the Excalibur on the southern coast map. So we see Sabo has taken their initial position not 150 meters or so away from the spawn. It's quite a conservative spot it's quite campy but at the same time they are driving an Excalibur which isn't famed for its armor or its gun handling or camo or anything like that it's typically going to get outperformed in any of those stats by any number of enemy tanks so I think this is a decent idea for the start of the game at least it allows you to at least keep your hit points together and set up for the next shot and I like what I'm seeing here from Sabo they are taking blind shots trying to use the minimap to aim at this thunderbolt that's clambering up they don't I don't think they hit any of those shots but I think it's worth trying especially considering the huge amount of ammunition the Excalibur carries if you're not worried about your accuracy stat certainly try this when you're in your games Sabo is going to move up just to get an eye in render range of this Thunderbolt and unfortunately none of those blind shots that we saw went in because the Thunderbolt is still on full health unfortunately, taking a bit of artillery fire from both teams there. But Sabo is now going to switch fire to these two tanks down in the south. It's here I want to bring forward an advantage of sitting back at the start of the game and a tank like the Excalibur or a similar tank destroyer. Notice on the minimap, centered around Sabo's tank, there are a number of rings. Don't really need to pay attention to any of them apart from the white one for this situation. The enemy tanks that they are shooting at are outside of this white ring, and this white ring represents 445 meters, which is the maximum possible spotting distance of any tank, regardless of the view range, regardless of the camo of the person they're shooting at, they cannot physically spot anybody further than that line. What this means is, even if all of the obstructions between Sabo and those tanks weren't there, and it was just a clear line of fire, Sabo can still shoot them, and there would be absolutely no chance that they would spot them. Only a tank that was much closer would be able to within that white line, and then the camo spotting equation comes into effect. But because they're shooting at somebody outside of the maximum, there is no chance that they will be spotted, so it's free damage. So, as we saw, Sabo and other friendlies are just going to start working over these tanks that seem to have parked themselves in a bit of a crossfire behind a large rock, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to keep them alive for very long. An enemy Chinukai is spotted in the middle. Not really much of a threat to Sabo's position because they are in that small dip in the center of the map, so there's very little chance that they're going to be popping up and spotting Sabo from there. They could go around to the north and they, they don't know it obviously but there's only a stuck 3G standing between them and Sabo's position. But what Sabo was trying to catch is this Thunderbolt that's making a real nuisance of itself. They are at an advantage against this P43 and they're just going to push. Sabo wants to get some side shots in while they still can. Uh, I believe this shot tracks the Thunderbolt so he can get an extra one off and goes for the kill shot but the Thunderbolt just fixes the tracks in time before Sabo can get the finishing shot downrange. So here we see the Stug is now going to get attacked by the same band of enemies now that have appeared a couple of enemy tanks have decided to rush up and back up this thunderbolt and here we see the first major relocation from Sabo to try and get in a position that is able to counter this push by the enemy. What makes this particular position so good is a number of reasons. First of all they are sat in a bush, Sabo is as well as the artillery so they have a good firing position on the enemies if they want to pursue the same track like further into the north basically along the top line of the map so if they go that way they head straight into Sabo's gun as well as the artillery which can stun them and possibly kill them 
But another reason why this position that Sabre has taken is very good is because it's created a crossfire. There are a number of friendly tanks in the center that have the other way cut off for the enemy. So if they want to advance over the right, they have to deal with Sabo. But if they advance over the left, they now have to deal with a number of medium tanks that are centered in the middle. So if they want to push forward, they have to take fire. And that's a positive damage trade for Sabo or their allies, which is good in the long run for the game. So this is basically textbook stuff from Sabo as well as the Allies, either knowingly or unknowingly, of course. The enemy have nowhere to go. Artillery is just pelting them. They can either drive into Sabo's gun or deal with these mediums that are now pushing into them. Obviously, they can't see Sabo as they have not been spotted all game. And Sabo is now just going to tear apart this Achilles. Notice how they wait until the Achilles is behind that opaque bush so they get the full camo bonus and don't get shot. I am quite impressed with the Excalibur's camo rating because the bush they're hiding in, when they're shooting there, they just get spotted. They probably got a flat 18-ish percent camo bonus from that bush just from hiding in it and not being 15 meters back. So on top of that, the Excalibur's camo must be pretty decent even when shooting so I'm quite impressed with that tank but as we can see that flank has been decimated and all that's left is that Thunderbolt with barely any health left. Now it's the waiting game for Sabo and this remaining Cavalier in the center to see what this Thunderbolt will do and would have known that this is a replay analysis of Sabo's gameplay but if you're in the Thunderbolt's position don't be worried about maintaining aggression on a flank you don't have to sit there and wait it is more than acceptable to just turn around and go back the way you came and especially in a medium tank that's fairly quick i mean all medium tanks are decently quick anyway but if you're in the thunderbolt and you have such low health a good play would probably be to go back up onto that cliff and just take pot shots because you can't really afford to trade that much but nevertheless a enemy kv2 rears their head and tries to take a pot shot of the cavalier gets absolutely slapped uh, for trying it and the enemy Thunderbolt makes an appearance and Sabo just takes them out easily enough. And this time Sabo was ready, they knew they were going to be spotted. There are still three enemy self-propelled guns on the team, one of which is the Leffer H, I believe, yeah, which is a very, very strong artillery piece. Just as I mentioned the strength of that artillery piece, they do counter battery fire and take out the friendly Grilla. And coming up is a little bit of a clue about the competency of this artillery player because Sabo just knocks down a tree and not too soon after an artillery shell comes in to try and hit them. So there is somebody is paying attention to their minimap and I'm fairly certain it's the lever from the direction it came from. But Sabo is now setting up to try and deal with this KV-2 who is driving in to just destroy the enemy cavalier and get some very nice shots off and this is a bit of a nitpick I would like to see some tracking shots here from Sabo to get the KV-2 in the open it's likely they've been pelted by artillery Sabo just scored a critical hit there it's likely their repair kit is off cooldown so a tracking shot would likely stick and give Sabo the opportunity to just finish the KV-2 off because there is no chance that that KV-2 can put the tracks back on quicker than Sabo can reload. Again, a little bit of a nitpick, but especially if you're ta using a tank destroyer like this with a especially fast firing gun, most of the British tank destroyers to be fair at this tier, you really need to be looking out for those tracking shots because the likelihood is if they don't have a repair kit, you're definitely going to be able to reload before they put the tracks back on. Nevertheless, Sabo is going to set up for this engagement with the KV-2 and the IKV-2. I wanted to pause it here because assuming things go as they usually go in World of Tanks, the enemies push in, Sabo is in a good position but is in a 2v1 and is up against a KV-2 and an IKV-65-2 who I believe is on full health so it will take a number of shots to kill them. The KV-2 has a chance of one-shotting Sabo here, but the likelihood is, if they're firing HE at least, they might get a tracking shot and do about 300 damage-ish. The IKV-65-2 is 
very maneuverable, so it can get it behind maybe if it rushes Excalibur. But the point I'm trying to make is that Sabo has to play this extremely well if they want to come out on top, because they are technically up against two tanks with the fire support of three enemy artillery pieces, because they can't really shoot the friendly TOG-2 in the bottom of the map, so they've only really got one moving target aside from the friendly artillery if they want to try and shoot them instead. So Sabo can very rapidly lose all of their HP if they aren't careful. So let's break down what actually happens when Sabo is faced with this engagement. And it's quite unexpected actually. What I anticipated was the KV-2 and the IKV would go straight for Sabo in their position, but it turns out the IKV-65-2 is going around, just catches the outside of the friendly cap circle, so they knew they were coming, but they do manage to get in deep behind the artillery, which gets taken out by the enemy artillery, but notice that Sabo has switched to high explosive. And this is a very, very good call for uh, the Excalibur because it's not got brilliant alpha damage, but does fire really rapidly. So to solve the, the damage output issue, they load HE and obviously their game knowledge has put together that the IKB-65-2 has terrible, terrible armor. So the HE has more than enough pen to go through and do full damage. And the enemy KV-2 is also mopped up by the friendly artillery. So Sabo coming out with very little health loss and an engagement that very well could have killed them off. So again, quite rightly, Sabre recognised that it's time to move up and take the fight to the enemy now. There aren't enough enemies left that will be hanging around in the middle of the map. They've all been spotted defending against the top two. So Sabo is going to try and look for the artillery pieces by using their binoculars as well as trying to use cover to stay out of range. They do catch the tracer of an enemy artillery piece, but more interestingly, they do find the enemy Tiger 131, who is running away from their own base and ignoring the TOG 2 with such little health remaining. This is a very puzzling move from the Tiger 131. I'm not sure what they were trying to accomplish here, but honestly, I think it would have been far better to engage the TOG 2, not only because they have to deal with a heavy tank that's not particularly fast and not particularly well armoured. They also have cover from the friendly artillery in those mountains nearby the TOG and they have their artillery on hand to support almost immediately so they almost certainly come out on top in their engagement. But now they are trying to win a long range engagement against a tank destroyer with binoculars and apparently a good camouflage so they are taking the much more difficult fight. Nevertheless, the friendly TOG does get taken out by just the artillery pieces without managing to kill any of them. And as we see there, the Tiger two, Tiger 131 pardon me, just drives out into the open because that's all they can really do to close the distance and Sabo just takes them out without issue, without even getting spotted. So Sabo here is gearing up for the final engagement of this battle, a 1v3 against enemy artillery. Uh, I know they do have backup from their friendly M41, but we're going to just say it's a 1v3 for this point because they are the only active tank remaining on the team. So the big problem when engaging SPGs is their shots are very likely to take your tracks off and the Excalibur gets away with it sort of because they've got a very traversable turret. It's technically not a turret, but it's not fully traversable is the point I'm trying to make. It essentially has a very wide gun arc, but does not have a full 360 degrees. So it's not a problem for dealing with this bishop who absolutely slams a shell into the Excalibur as they drive forward into them. But when they start taking fire like this, it's, there's a chance that if they get tracked, they won't be able to put effective fire down. Now, the Lefeu, who's been a problem this whole game, isn't ceasing to hold that title. I believe gets a blind fire of some kind off doing about 50 damage. Now the Excalibur is not very well armoured so they can't, Sabo can't really take too many more of these shots. They do find the Lefer who spots them and has a chance with a quick reload but thankfully whiffs the shell. Easy enough to take down after that but the enemy M41 is still standing. This American tier 5 artillery piece is 
very strong, I would say, because it's got such a large cannon. And the Excalibur, I just don't think, has the armor to hold up against the M41. So even splashed a direct hit that splashes is probably going to kill them. But thankfully, the M41 just hasn't moved from their position. And Sabo takes down an impressive game of World of Tanks here. What Sabo demonstrated there towards the end, the aggressive pushing as far forward as they could, just try and find the enemy tanks as soon as possible and just destroy them as quickly as possible while they still had the health to spend was a fantastic demonstration of what you should do in the late game against self-propelled guns. They do have large cannons, they do have splash damage, but they also have very long reloads. So if you can, ha if you have the health to take that hit, then I thoroughly suggest you just take it and drive towards them as fast as you can and dif diminish the time they have to get another reload off because they haven't got very many hit points. You're not going to need more than two or three shots with the average tank to kill them. And a tracking shot will certainly help with that as well. So you have plenty of time if you move as fast as you can towards them and just single them out, kill them as quickly as you can. But nevertheless, that's another replay analysis for you. I hope I showed how the decision making of Sabo and his teammates and their enemies also put together the sort of jigsaw that is this victory. Sabo coming away with an excellent result. If you like this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing if you are interested in content like this. I'm trying to refine how these videos come out uh, at this point. So. If you have any suggestions for how to streamline it or make it better, some information that I'm missing that you really want to see, then please leave it in a comment down below. Anyway, uh, with all that said, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.